Hi everyone, Libra Anarchy here. I wanted to talk about two stories recently in the news. One featuring a gay activist by the name of, you know, what was his name, Dan Savage, and another one featuring a very anti-gay activist, a pastor, by the name of Sean Harris. I wanted to put these in the same video because I wanted to actually kill two birds with one stone and not have to make two freaking videos about this. Okay. Actually, about these topics. Okay, let's just go ahead and start with Sean Harris, because he's the easiest to tackle. Um, I'm going to go ahead and link to a recording of a piece of his sermon that people are rather up in arms about, and I'm going to link to a news story about his sermon. Now, the source is going to be biased, but it wouldn't necessarily matter. Um, even most mainstream Christian sources would probably be offended by what he said. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because, as I said, I left a link. But this individual um, advocates actually doing violence against children for not conforming to gender roles. <sighs> yeah, it, this is one of those things that you have to hear for yourself. And, by the way, um, I'm also going to link you to an article about um, boys' clothing throughout history. Well, it's not like all civilizations, but it's about how for the past few centuries, it's been very normal for men to wear dresses, or excuse me, for boys to wear dresses. And only in this past century have has boys' clothing come to be distinguishable from, from girls' clothing. And this is actually um, a fairly new development because in the Middle Ages in Europe, men wore gowns. And so men and women's clothing were fairly similar, although th not the same. Um, and so boys and girls were going to be dressed essentially the same anyway. But yeah, you can read the article, so I can't help but wonder what this pastor would say about the society, you know, ye old medieval Europe. <sighs> Who knows? Ugh. So, yeah. So even even with girls, he he wants to control girls right down to the way. Excuse me, to the way they smell. Goofy. Just plain goofy. And he's yelling about it too. No idea. Why is he yelling about it? Well, I guess because it's the ravings of a lunatic. Okay, now to a slightly more complicated topic. Dan Savage. Um, he did a. He's a gay activist. Started the um, what's it called? The It Gets Better campaign. Um. And he did a speech, a controversial one, at a conference f of high school journalists, meaning it was voluntary for the high schoolers to be there. So they didn't have to come and they didn't have to stay. So. Um, many conservatives are saying that Dan Savage was bullying the children. He's an anti bullying activist and who was bullying children and therefore was a hypocrite. I disagree with the statement, however, I don't think that Dan's Dan Savage's speech was entirely admirable either. I'm going to address what I what I think is true, and that is his stance on the Bible. There are many people who use the Bible or the Quran or you know other religious text 
as an excuse to bully gay people or as an excuse to do any number of things to other people that they don't want to take responsibility for. Absolutely. And he was addressing this. And the Bible does have verses that endorse slavery. Instead of saying, don't own slaves, there are verses in the Bible that tell slaves how to behave toward their masters and tell masters how to treat their slaves. And he brought up the point that there are many things that the Bible endorses. Everything from dietary laws to laws about clothing to slavery to stoning adulterers that um, modern day society is thrown out. We do not stone adulterers anymore. This is not considered a some kind of viable way to consider to deal with adultery in our society and yet the parts about homosexuality have yet to be thrown out and if we can throw out some stuff surely to goodness we can throw out other stuff in his words and I understand that I'm speaking to adults here if we can throw out some bullshit, then surely to goodness we can throw out other bullshit. Now, here's the part that I don't like. Well, there's two parts. First of all, I don't like that he was cussing at high schoolers. I know that cuss words on their own are sounds, and sounds in and of themselves should not be offensive. And in general, if we're just talking adults to adults, yeah. However, it does show a certain level of disrespect to your audience. If if you're speaking about a serious topic and you being the adult in the room are expected to be an example because you are after all the adult in the room and you're speaking in a society that considers certain words offensive. Now I think the conventions about which words are, are considered offensive are stupid. However, they still remain. And therefore, if you're speaking to an audience and you want to show the audience respect, cussing is not a good way to do that. Now, when um, Actually, all through this little clip where Sean made his points about the Bible, students got up and walked away. That is their right. I'm very sad that journalist students do not want to get the whole story. And I'm very sad that these students are incurious enough to want to remain ignorant about what, what their holy book says. Unfortunately, for them, I don't think they're entirely responsible. Which brings me to my next criticism. He was calling them wussies for standing up and walking out while he was expressing what I agree with, that the Bible, is, frankly, has a lot of stuff in it that our society, rightfully so, would condemn. So why not homosexuality? So the Bible does not hold up as an excuse to bully people. But the children that walked out are not wussies. Because, frankly, they're not yet entirely responsible for what they're doing. Likely, those children are brainwashed. Unfortunately, those children likely are growing up in very religious homes. And unfortunately, when you call them wussies, you're, you're taking a person, a child, who has been brainwashed, and you're doing something that is not going to help them come around to your side. Same with the cussing. You're not going to bring them around to your side. And you're not dealing with an adult who's been 
anti-gay, for example, or fundamentalist Christian, for example, for a lot of years, and they spend lots of time defending their beliefs, no, they're, they're like very, very likely not going to be convinced. There are deconversion stories out there from people like that, but for the most part, they're not going to be convinced. Children, however, they can be convinced. Unfortunately, now it may take them longer to be convinced. By the way, I do in the links description have a in the links description. <laughs> I do, however, in the description have a link of a video of that part of the speech, um, and I also have something else. No, no, I think that's all. But um, yeah, if you're calling them wussies, you are missing an opportunity. You are missing an opportunity to say. You're journalism students. You're missing a story. Or, if your Bible is worth defending, then why don't you stay and hear my arguments and then wait for the questions and then ask me questions or challenge what I'm saying about the Bible? Or, if your faith is so strong, why are you leaving? Now, I understand that this is a person who has been beaten up because he is gay. I get that there's personal baggage there, but unfortunately, that doesn't mean that those specific children were wussies. Their characters, in my opinion, aren't fully developed. And, and instead of taking the opportunity to say, how strong is your faith if you're walking out? How strong are your convictions if you're walking out? How strong is your intent to become a journalist if you're walking away from a story? And instead, called them a name. I don't think that he was bullying them. There are a lot of um, conservative talking heads saying, He's a bully, but calling somebody a name isn't bullying. Swearing about something that they hold sacred is not bullying. It's an opinion, it's a very blunt opinion, and in my, in my opinion, it was a very poorly expressed opinion. And the opinion will win applause from people like myself, but I understand that there are people that need to be convinced and insulting people is not the way to convince them. It's, it's the way to convince them that you're a mean person. And unfortunately that is that one insult in a couple of instances of referring to excrement is going to be used against you by fundamentalists to manipulate the public dialogue and to manipulate those children and to manipulate other children. Remember, you're competing with very you're very shrewd people. Yes, they are swarmy, smarmy, I guess the word would be. They're very smarmy people, but they're very, very shrewd. Listen to some apologetics. Listen to people like Ray Comfort. Very good at rhetorical word games. Extremely good at this sort of thing. If you're, if you're not on guard, if you're not careful. That's what you're competing with. So, as much as I would not ever suggest that you stoop to their level of rhetoric, I would suggest um, being the good guy, the, f the fairy godmother, so to speak. And that's not a gay joke. When I say fairy godmother, that's like saying the Luke Skywalker. It's, you know, the good guy. And, the, and you can let your opponents, uh, you know, lie about you and all that. And then you can say, but where have I said this? Where have I said this? Where have I done this? 
Um, if you think if you think that I'm planning this, justify your point. Blah 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 blah, and then they look like Darth Vader. As it stands now, it's much easier for them to make you look like Darth Vader, and that's very sad. Um, also, if you're an atheist, it's much easier for them to make atheists look like Darth Vader. Remember, somebody who is a rather hardcore atheist, you know, anti-theist, um, maybe they're 35 on YouTube making YouTube videos debunking creationism and such, you're not trying to convince them. Remember, it, you're trying to convince children not to bully other children. And unfortunately, so are the apologists, so are the theologians, so are the preachers. And you have to compete a little bit more wisely. Otherwise, it, it will be easier for children to be tricked through logical loop-de-loops that gays, atheists, whatever group are just mean people, are just bullies, and there's this gay agenda, and atheists hate God, and blah da 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 Okay, but yeah. So, check out the links in the description if you would like, um, Especially if you like, would like to hear what I'm actually talking about. And um, I think that's about all I have to say. Now, I wouldn't respond to every little specific thing, or else I would get, get off on one of my half-hour rants, which they can get really fun. <laughs> Especially when I end them with dying of fire to somebody who is... A complete low life. <laughs> now, but that's the thing. He's an adult. And considering what he was doing in that video, he knows good and well. He knows the score. He knows what he's doing. Uh, so. But these kids aren't going to know what the political pundits and the pastors and, and the theologians and the apologists and the da 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 da, da are doing necessarily. Okay. So on that note, know thyself and be thyself because really that's all that's all you can be. And um yeah. That's about it and I just destroyed my cool sign off. <laughs>